Hello, and today I thought to myself, I'm going to put these bad boys uh, back on their original uh, wheels. Now, of course, I put the, uh, the B for 5000D uh, on the rubber strap, and I'm just going to zoom in, see if I can catch the light there. Uh, I thought I'd put the, uh, the metal bracelet uh, back on um, the, the B5000D, uh, and uh, I have to be careful, that could fall over. If it does fall over, in fact, it will fall over, so I'll put it like that. And uh, I thought I'd put the, um, the gold uh, bracelet back on the, the B5000GD. Uh, uh, once again, I thought, you know, this looked really nice, actually. Uh, in this daylight, uh, the way that it's coming through the window here, it looks really nice. But I thought if I'm going to go through the trouble of, um, of, of putting uh, the bracelets back on, let me uh, zoom there. Um, and the reason I've got two screwdrivers, um, these are both um, 2.5 milli, I think, is you need um, uh, two screwdrivers to actually take uh, the main uh, pin uh, out. Uh, so that's why there are two screwdrivers there. Uh, you can see that there's a, a flathead screwdriver there and there. And I actually need uh, one screwdriver either side. And that reminds me, I think that in the future, uh, Casio are going to release uh, this model um, with a, a, a new quick release system. Uh, for me, that seems a natural progression of, of where the, the full metal square might go. But I imagine instead of the, um, uh, the screw method uh, with, uh, so inside there, we have a, a male screw and a female screw, and that is inside a collar, and it's actually the collar part uh, that secures the, the strap uh, to the case. It's actually a very secure, very solid way to do it. it, it it's actually something I do like, but I have to admit, um, doing wheel changes like this, changing out the straps is, is really tricky. And uh, I did one video and you can see that I had to uh, tape one of the screwdrivers down and uh, with the other one uh, apply a lot of pressure uh, to undo it. And I think that's because they are connected um, uh, Casio when they are um, in the process of manufacturing. They, um, they, they lock, uh, they use a Loctite uh, when the, the screws go back in. So I thought to myself, I'm going to try and do that on camera, but it might be a little more difficult, but I, I, shall, I shall try that now. <laughs> so I had forgotten uh, how tricky uh, this is. And in the past, I've actually uh, secured the watch with, um, uh, it's actually a, a, a Zinn watch case. And I put the watch, um, uh, the case just seems to hold it uh, really well. But the, the, the tricky bit is you, you have to offer up these flathead screwdrivers uh, to the, uh, the flathead uh, screw. And, uh, and when they uh, take purchase, uh, you're able then to, to whiz it round. And uh, I can see that my left one here, uh, I haven't got it. Um, and also I'm behind a camera, so I, this is very difficult. Um, let me, uh, ah, okay, I, I, I can feel I've just taken, no, I haven't. Uh, I wanted to show you on camera because this is a real tricky thing. And um, attaching my screwdriver to the side of the desk is probably a bit away. Um, for some reason, I just can't get purchase on the left-hand side. Uh, I may have to um, uh, move the, the camera. Uh, yeah, uh, hold on, a uh, pause, and uh, I'll see if I can do this without the camera. Hold on. So fiddling around, I, I have been able to take purchase and uh, we, we should be okay now. Now, um, in the past, what I've done is I've, um, I've put my finger in at one end uh, to provide friction and then I've offered up uh, my screwdriver at this end. And uh, my finger um, has been able to provide, ah, there's not enough friction there, so I'm gonna use my fingernail. And I'm trying not to damage the, um, the screw head, but because I'm being very gentle and uh, I'm, yeah, I should be okay. Uh, but let me see if I can, yeah, there we go. So my fingernail is offering the friction on the, the screw head on the other side, All right? So that's coming undone there. And I thought it's worth showing you on camera this because 
this has to be a reference for uh, um, for <laughs> anyone trying to do these strap changes. Yeah, you can see that um, I can feel the residue of Loctite on that screw. And I'm using my other, other finger there. Once again, I'm behind the camera, so this is really tricky to do when uh, you're behind a camera. Ah, see, look, the slightest thing pushes you away. But that should be undone now. Yeah, I think that's, that's, that's undone there. Right, there you go. So I've got one screw there. And uh, I can tell that, and that's the other, that's the, the female part, right? So it, it, I've only got the collar in there, but whilst I'm in this configuration, I'll try and get the, uh, the other one out as well. And uh, using my uh, nail here uh, to provide the friction and hold that screw head in place is enough uh, to, uh, to do this. Uh, but let me try here, there we go. Uh, yeah, this one, yeah, so I, I don't feel that the Loctite on this on this one. So that might be already able to come undone. Um, there you go. Uh, I can tell you G-Shock, this is one fiddly thing. And I bet that G-Shock actually has um, a holder or something that uh, allows uh, the, the watch head to be uh, uh, placed in. And uh, they must have a system that allows the, the screwdriver to be offered up to the screw head and you can turn it. I, I bet they've got a little device that perhaps it goes in that way. But you can see now that, um, that the, 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 the male and female part has been removed. And uh, so what's holding the, the strap in place are these tubes. And uh, I thought, why don't I show you these uh, tubes actually? Uh, I think I need my other uh, device, hold on. Yeah, the, um, um, I use my um, pin remover, my Bergeon pin remover, uh, to get this tube out. And um, because it's sort of held by friction, it's sort of there. And I seem to remember that the moment I, um, uh, I hit the, the side of the, the tube. Uh, yeah, uh, it normally, I normally feel it straight away. I might. Because I'm behind the camera, um, it is making life a bit harder. Um, I'm having to work out how I uh, best do this. It, the, the tube should pop out very easily. And also I'm being uh, very careful not to touch. Ah, there we go. I can feel that tube coming out, yeah. So that's the, there, see how that dropped out of there? Uh, because the, uh, uh, the tube is the thing that, that does all the heavy lifting and uh, you can see how the, the tube uh, holds the, 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 the strap in place there. And uh, the red thing is something I'm going to talk about in a moment, but let me see if I can get this tube out here. And also, if my voice sounds a bit uh, croaky, it's because I've got a cold, uh, but I thought I'm going to try and, and do this today. Yeah, this, uh, I just need to, uh, purchase the, the side of the tube and then push it through. Uh, it's probably just friction that's, that's holding, um, that's holding this, uh, there we go. And, uh, and the way I was doing it, but th that one was a bit tighter, but you can see it, you know, it's coming out nicely there. And uh, hold on. Yeah, this one's a bit tighter, but there we go, that, that's come out. And uh, the, you can see the, the watch head there. Um, I wanted to show you uh, this uh, strap because this is the uh, the uh, the original G-Shock strap uh, for the B5000. Um, so it's basically um, uh, this head, this watch head, but with a negative display. And the uh, G-Shock only actually made, uh, only released uh, three watches uh, with uh, with this red. Uh, coloring of the the plastic part that uh, engages with the case and also um, engages with the spacer uh, between the bezel and the case and uh, I wanted to show you um, if I just carefully move that out of the way for a moment I actually wanted to show you this uh, red uh, spacer but I thought um, uh, I could compare it against the black spacer that's inside here. 
So what I'm going to do is, um, because it's a bit tricky, I'm going to do the exact same thing uh, with this one and, uh, and take these uh, screws out. So I shall, I'll, I shall do that right now. Actually, I thought, why don't I show you uh, me struggling? I'm only struggling because I'm, I'm doing it in a very, uh, probably the most um, uh, wrong way to do it because I'm doing it on camera. But once again, the, it, it's, it's offering up these two um, screwdrivers. And uh, yeah, no, no, that's going to be difficult. I, I need to switch the camera. I need to do it without the camera. So I shall do that right now. And I'm only going to loosen it and then I'll come back onto the camera. Actually, I remembered uh, this from last time. Uh, so I was very careful not to tighten it very much. So I'm using my uh, thumb and a nail uh, to hold uh, that screw head down. And uh, on this, um, so I've only got to um, uh, bother with uh, this one. Now if I put that up to there and uh, like with the, the silver one, although that is proving a little tricky. Uh, the minute you put the camera in between you and the object, it, it's much harder, but I should be able to do it. Um, ah, okay, there we go. Um, I can definitely feel, oh, uh, maybe it's a bit harder. Um, let me try that. Uh, yeah, I wanted you to see have I got, that might have, uh, no. Okay, hold on. It's half ripped my nail away, but it, it was coming undone. So let me see this through. Oh gosh, the second you put the camera in the way, there we go, that's coming away now. Uh, yeah, this is, uh, I bet they have a jig, um, the, the Casio service center they definitely will they won't they won't go through this um struggle i'm sure right so that that's that one out and um i've um hopefully this uh, was already loose um i'm gonna put my finger there and because uh, once again i wanted to show you the effort here that can go into it and uh, i can feel the other side whizzing around Ah, I need to put my nail in the way. Gosh, what a faff, hey? Um, I've, when I've done this before, I don't know how I've managed to do it, uh, uh, but I have. Yeah, the camera is really, hold on. I can promise you that was again the, uh, what a fiddly thing. Yeah, th this is making me think uh, G-Shock, uh, the quick release system. I mean, it, you can imagine that uh, G-Shock's new quick release system inside uh, this full metal, you know, it's going to be very, very nice. Um, but it's needed because that uh, that is such a tricky thing to do. And once again, I will knock out the tubes here um, you would think that I had this, uh, um, there we go, uh, that one came out very easily. You'd think I'd have this really worked out by now, but uh, there we go. Uh, yeah, that, that's the reason why I use this tool, because it does make that uh, job much easier. That's the perfect uh, size for pushing those uh, bars out but um, anyway let's quickly look at the these two heads and uh, if i can make this uh, table a little uh, tidier let me see if i can do that um, there we go and uh, ah the tubes and uh, go over there uh, because these screws are so small, you really do want to get them out of the way as quickly as you can. Uh, they are my two screwdrivers. So I alluded to the, uh, ah, if I uh, flip over this, you can see the, uh, uh, these, uh, the red parts. Uh, ah, and also I need the, the TFC, hold on. So, um, 
that there's a red spacer here and I thought I'm going to do this on camera and uh, when you've got the bezel off you can literally uh, take the uh, the outer case off just like that and I'm going to leave the the red uh, space on for a moment I actually think that this is a very very cool thing that, that G-Shock did and if I do the same here um, there we go um, you can see how uh, the G-Shock have used um, a black spacer. Now, uh, when you're holding these uh, cases like these, these modules, uh, they are, uh, you can see this lovely engineering that goes into, you know, what Casio are doing here. This is really de very delightful stuff. Uh, that might be um, uh, a little, let me get my, let me get something to uh, polish my, pause off there and I'll do the same for this uh, actually let me go and get uh, one I made earlier hold on so you can see the uh, the red spacer um, on this module and G-Shock only put this uh, red spacer on the B5000D which is this one uh, they put it on the, the B5000TF uh, uh, C with the original thin red line and uh, you you can just see the red spacer if you look very um, carefully uh, through uh, when the, uh, uh, the when the cover is on and in fact I wanted um, I actually have a, a spare cover I wanted to uh, uh, look at those together hold on so uh, this is a, a brand new spare cover that I, it's an original part from G-Shock and uh, I got it um, oh, ages ago uh, because I thought to myself um, what I may do in time is uh, scratch uh, uh, this one uh, that came with the watch and um, I could uh, you know, swap it out for one that has never been touched because I thought about keeping these things so I thought, why don't I keep um, the, the uh, bracelet and bezels as a spare part? And um, because I imagine, yeah, I mean, of course, these are going to be identical. And, uh, you know, they look identical from here. Um, yeah, I thought there might be a reference number or something indicating, a, the, you know, a, pr a production time. But no. Anyway, these are original parts. Uh, this uh, that is the original one, and uh, this is the uh, the spare one that I have. Uh, so I'll, I'll put the original back on, and uh, and I'll keep the spare. Anyway, um, I thought because I'm taking uh, the wheels, you know, the 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 rubber wheels off, and I'm putting the bracelets back on. I thought when I take uh, the straps off, it's an opportunity for me to, you know, examine these. Uh, bezels and I thought why don't I do that and this was um, originally when I, I saw this I thought this must be a steel uh, that they've colored and so the coloring goes all the way through uh, but I'm led to believe that it's ion plating um, so uh, they basically get uh, a steel version here and then they plate it so that it has the, the gold um, color coloring here also, apparently, the ion plating is, is like a hardening process. So uh, you might find that um, any of G-Shock's ion plated uh, steel watches, uh, the ion plated version is slightly harder uh, than the, the straightforward um, naked steel because the ion plating process actually is a, um, hardens the surface. That's what I'm I've heard and I, I haven't had chance to really check that that's the case but anyway uh, so the whole reason for um, <laughs> well one of the things I wanted to show you is I have a couple of spare red spaces there so that's the the thing uh, that um, you can see here actually it's come off in my hand uh, so I, I'll show it to you like that but when I've done this before and I've looked at these modules, I've always thought, wow, what amazing engineering this really is. This is the, the red spacer. And I imagine that the black one here is going to come off just as easy. Yeah, there we go. Uh, so this is the, the black spacer. And apparently 
Um, so I understand uh, the black spacer is the one that they use now um, for all of their full metal models, except for the MRG model, because of course that is a solid case construction, even though it is it follows the you know the sizing of this. Uh, but this is the black one, uh, this is the red one, and uh, the red one was only featured on three models: uh, the uh, the TFC, which was uh, the original Porter uh, model. Uh, this is one of my favourite squares, actually, and I that thin red line and blue text is always going to be something that you look at. Uh, but it featured on the uh, the B5000D, which was the original stainless steel, and then the B5000, which was this, uh, but in uh, with negative display. And um, so this strap is the only uh, strap uh, that was OEM with the B5000 with the negative display and it had the, the colour matching uh, plastic uh, part there. If you look uh, on, on the other rubber straps, I mean they don't do that many, uh, it's the exact same thing but the plastic colouring is black uh, to match the, the black casing etc of all the other models. So that's how G-Shock did that and I thought it was really cool that they had this uh, signature of design uh, for uh, their original models. And uh, once again, when you look at the quality of the, the build quality here of these modules, it is very cool. Look at that. There's something quite pleasant about that. And I suppose if you really wanted to, you could attach the strap uh, to the module like, like that and wear it that way. I mean, I don't think you would do that, but you could do that. You can see how it goes there. It's kind of cool. Um, let me show you on this uh, side. You can see how that goes. But of course, it's been designed uh, to have its case on. So um, you, you're not really going to do that. But I thought that this was um, just such an interesting, oh, I've, I've smudged it, hold on. Uh, that's one thing uh, you touch. Uh, these cases and straight away you've got the, the oil residue from your fingers over them over the modules but I can't help but keep looking at these modules like this and uh, appreciating the, the build quality you know this is a, a, a screw down case back uh, and inside it has all that technology apparently the case back is DLC and actually I bet this case is DLC as well, or it could be ion plated, but because the ion, uh, but the DLC has this very shiny, depthy hue to it. Um, now maybe not. Maybe the case is actually ion plated, and they reserve the DLC for all the black plates. I don't know, but you can see that the 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 sheen on the black plate um, for. And both of these is identical, uh, uh, probably apart from some numbers there. But yeah, I mean, what a nice object, really, this is. Well, for me, uh, having a bit of an engineering bent, I can see the, you know, the tight tolerances and build quality that has gone into uh, these watches. Uh, you know, this really is something very special. You know, and the way that the, the buttons feel. And I don't know if you can hear the uh, the click there, uh, but what a lovely um, technical engineering thing. And I suppose the uh, the negative display is highlighted there. Doesn't it look cool uh, with the, the gold there? It looks so cool, actually. I've just thought, why don't I put the uh, the silver case on the, uh, the gold one there? Oh, look at that. Actually, that is quite, uh, that looks quite good actually, doesn't it? Wow, that is interesting. And um, I'll do the same for, uh, for this one. Let's stick the, uh, the gold uh, bezel on the, uh, the silver. Oh, that looks quite good. In fact, that looks very good. Hmm, it's giving me ideas. Maybe I stumbled on a modification here that 
I quite like. Wow. Now, uh, that's been caught on camera. I did not expect uh, to do that. I suppose these watches uh, allow themselves, you know, to do these mods like this. But that is sort of nice. I do. I really like the uh, the silver buttons uh, coming through. Look, at, I I actually really like that. That's pretty cool. Anyway, at this point, um, actually, I've got the uh, the original TF uh, TFG here, and. Um, can see uh, that is quite interesting isn't it uh, this is of course the, the TFC the original C3PO uh, this is such a favorite of mine but, um, but let me come back for to, um, to my accidental uh, on-camera modification putting uh, the uh, B5000D in a bezel over a um, no sorry putting the module, the B5000D module. <laughs> I, I actually had it right the first time. What I've done here is I've put the B5000GD bezel over a B5000D module. And uh, can you believe it? Whilst I'm holding this, it's uh, automatically going for the time sync, which I think has got. Anyway, I, I am really kind of intrigued by this the way it looks and I've realized I have to go for lunch uh, so I'm going to go for lunch take a quick break and then I'll come back so I'm just back from lunch and uh, I know it's um, you know not evening time and I, so I've got a hot chocolate actually it's not even hot chocolate it's um, uh, Ovaltine but there you go and uh, I left um, these two on the desk because um, I was quite intrigued uh, by what I had done and for some reason uh, this with the um, the red spacer uh, there like that and uh, then the, the silver buttons and uh, this gold uh, case for some reason I quite like that and I was thinking to myself would I actually wear that as a, as a modded watch and I thought you know I really might and um, it made me think maybe I uh, I might want to put this together like that and wear it for a while so I, I do not know but it is quite cool isn't it um, it really is quite cool and I thought you know it looks very good you know I could even put the rubber strap back on and uh, you know that does look very very nice and it's got me thinking because I've accidentally modded some full metal squares here. And uh, this one, of course, is the negative display, but it has the, uh, the gold um, mirrored uh, outer part, but it has the matching buttons. And it has the, uh, 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 what came with this module, the black spacer. But I thought I could easily put um, a red spacer in denoting that it's a mod and in fact that's you know completely doesn't mean anything but I thought I was just thinking out loud but I thought you know how cool is that and if you put the the red bracelet on like that you could see that definitely works I mean I suppose it does look like a mod yes you would but look how the 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 bracelet matches the, uh, the the inner gold part and then matches the outer part, but the gold buttons are there. I am, um, it really has got me thinking because I actually quite like the look of that. I really do. I mean, this is giving me ideas and, uh, and hopefully it, it's giving everyone else ideas. And uh, I thought, why don't I show you uh, the, the desk here? because, uh, you know, at the side, I've got all my uh, props and uh, bits and pieces. Look at that. And uh, to, um, to show you what a, a geek uh, can look like, look at that. This is my uh, Reiko uh, toolbox with all my bits and pieces in. And uh, yeah, I suppose this is the uh, uh, one of my workstations and uh, and also one of my preferred 
um, viewing areas uh, for making uh, these hands-on watch videos uh, because I've got the natural light coming in this way and I thought to myself I'd always be able to you know, put the watch uh, at an angle like this to catch uh, the natural light coming through. Now in, um, uh, if I take it off camera and I look at it, the lighting looks great. Uh, it's nice and diffused and looks good. Uh, so I'm really hoping that the camera uh, picks this up. In the past, I've noticed that the camera does a really good job uh, because I'm looking through the, the camera's viewfinder. Uh, so I don't actually see an awful lot. Uh, I have to hope that it's, it's catching everything. But... Um, yeah, so I, I didn't expect to get to the point today where I um, am undecided uh, about what I then might do. Uh, because when I put uh, the, the bracelet on there like that and leave the negative display in place with the... I, I really, I quite like that. It makes the watch feel a completely different watch. Once again, I think I'm touching on something I mean, maybe modders have this uh, feeling all the time. Uh, maybe they uh, are, uh, what I'm experiencing is what modders uh, feel like all the time. So I can really appreciate that. Um, I love the, um, the silver buttons in contrast with the gold case there. Uh, that is really quite nice. Yeah. How interesting, what an interesting video because in this video and live, I didn't expect uh, to do this. I did not expect to mod uh, my B5000s uh, like this. In fact, let me just put the, um, let me just pull the, the TFC uh, uh, into place. There you go, I don't really know what I'm doing here, but uh, I thought, why not? Um, I might have to move the camera a little. I wanted to capture, uh, look at that. Hmm, it's very, very cool. Yeah, that's very cool. Let me, um, I'm just using the TFC as a reference to illustrate uh, uh, these two mods. Uh, once again, uh, this has the B5000D module with the B5000GD uh, bezel. And uh, this one has the, the B5000GD negative display module with the gold buttons with the B5000D bezel. And um, that's how we've got this, uh, this interesting uh, modification. And in fact, I can put the, uh, the TFG, uh, the, the gold one, in the way there, and let me zoom in. So this is what a, a full gold uh, TFG looks like. I'm gonna to have to zoom out a little there. And this is what my mod looks like. So I do apologize, I the, the battery ran out on the uh, camera. Uh, so um, it will probably just jerkily stopped. But I think I was in the middle of explaining that uh, by accident, I've modded two of my B5000 um, full metals. And uh, once again, uh, this is the, uh, the B5000GD gold module with the B5000D bezel. And this is the, uh, the uh, B5000D module uh, with uh, the B5000GD gold bezel. And this has the, uh, the red, uh, spacer in between uh, that normally comes with the, the factory standard B5000D. And you can see there the red just shi uh, shining through there. And uh, it, it, it's just adding to the intrigue in this watch and this module. And uh, over here, I could, because I do have a spare red spacer, I could pop that in and use it as my own notice that it's a mod, but in actual fact, I don't need to because uh, of course I've kept the, the, right, the right spacer with the module. But this has the gold module with the, the steel bezel. Anyway, where I got to is 
Uh, this video I never intended uh, to mod my B5000. Um, I was planning on uh, putting both modules back on the original bracelet. Um, but when I, uh, in particular, coming across uh, the, uh, the, B5, the, the B5000D with the, the gold bezel, that's the one that got me thinking because I thought if I then uh, refitted uh, the rubber strap Look at how cool that is. In fact, why don't I do this whilst I'm on camera? Uh, right, so if I hold that there, and if I get the, um, because I, I don't need to fully connect everything uh, because I can simply uh, just push the, the tube through. There we go. And that will grab the, um, uh, that'll grab the bracelet, hold on. Uh, because everything fits so um, tightly, uh, you simply, um, uh, but I'm not wanting to force anything, so I might try that the other side. Imagine if uh, Casio make everything quick release, which is what I expect them to do, actually. Um, there we go, that's going down there. Uh, yeah. Ah, so, okay, um, I won't push that any f f um, whilst I'm on camera. It's actually tricky doing this on camera, but, but what I'm wanting to do is get the, uh, the band in situ uh, so that you, you can see what it looks like. See how, how that one went in nice and easy. And this one is probably just the same, but I probably just have to press that down and because um, it's probably the tight tolerances of the, ah, there we go, the plastic, there we go. Um, so this is what my mod um, looks like with the B5000D as the base module and you know, I thought I would wear that. I would actually, that is actually very uh, appealing. Um, so I decided when I, whilst I was having my lunch in the middle of this video, I decided to um, uh, keep these modules in this configuration just for the time being, uh, whilst I have a think about what I want to do with these mods because maybe I want to keep them, which is uh, not out of the realms of possibility. And also I could um, have a think, you know, do I put uh, these on the, the bracelet or, or back on the, the rubber strap as I'm doing now. Um, but they look great, don't they? I, I like them both. It's probably because it's novel. You know, um, you know I imagine that I will go back to the, um, the standard uh, G-Shock configuration. Um, yeah, just like the other one, you have to fiddle a little bit. And once again, I'm on camera, so it's always a bit more tricky. Um, yeah, Ugh. when you're on camera doing this, believe me, it's a lot more tricky. Uh, that's gone through there. So this has the, the GD gold module. Uh, I've put the, the steel uh, bezel around it, but I thought, I would wear that because it looks so cool. So just like that it does because you get the glance of the or of the gold and it makes you think, yeah, that looks pretty cool. So I'm quite uh, uh, surprised by how surprised I am with respect to these uh, modifications. Uh, in the past, I have thought about messing around. I, I knew that this was a possibility. And uh, at the very beginning, back in 2018, when I had sight of these watches, I thought, I bet uh, Casio G-Shock have done this on purpose because uh, they lend themselves to the modern community so well. And of course, Casio G-Shock has a great big modern community uh, anyway. So you know, this plays straight into that. But don't they look good? They look really good. I'm, I'm tempted to say that I might even like the gold and silver one with the negative display. The negative display part matches the band so well. Anyway, this is a uh, food fuel for thought and I will have to come back because I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet. But what a nice, pleasant surprise. Um, that was actually great that I caught that on camera like that because um, that was completely not uh, planned. Let's see if I can balance these and get a photo of them. 
Uh, there we go. If I zoom in, that's not bad. Uh, look at that. I can get a photo there. Anyway, um, uh, a bit of a different video. Uh, modding the B5000 G-Shock, which is the G-Shock Square, which is a, a fabulous watch because it lends itself so so well to modding. And um, yeah, I will let you know what I what I do with my mods. I do hope everybody's well, and speak again very soon. So to end this video, I thought, um, why don't I put them on either wrist so that you can see how. The terrible twins, uh, the the terrible moddy twins, have fared. I've actually uh, popped the uh, the matching screws in. Uh, so this has the uh, so this is the B five thousand D silver module, uh, but I've put on the the, the G D gold bezel, and uh, that looks really nice. And uh, uh, I've got the G D gold uh, negative display module uh, with the uh, the silver bezel, and I thought these looked really nice. Isn't that strange? I, I never intended uh, to do this. It uh, sort of happened on camera live whilst I was doing it. And I decided to keep the, um, uh, to put the uh, bands back on, uh, denoting for me that these are my two little terrible twin mods. Uh, but for some reason, this color configuration, what I've done here, it's, it's changed the, the feeling of the watch. It's like, um, uh, it's literally like obtaining a new watch, which I suppose is a really nice thing uh, to happen. And I'm sure that the modern community, you know, think this anyway, and they probably think, Stephen, what are you talking about? It's what we've known for a long time, uh, that these mods are, uh, you know, a desirable thing to do. In fact, you can see that G-Shock might have even her of intended uh, because a lot of their releases, uh, the, the colorways uh, do complement each other. So you can possibly see that G-Shock have decided that this is what they uh, you know, expect uh, the G-Shock fans to actually do. Uh, let me grab the, uh, the bracelets. So these are the, uh, the two original bracelets that I was going to put on uh, back onto the original stock models. And I suppose I could put these bracelets on here and, and that is something that I may do in time. But for some reason I thought, why don't I stick? Why don't I give these mods a whirl? Because there's something very charming about this. Uh, the, uh, the gold buttons and screw heads uh, uh, matching uh, the gold outer part there. Uh, with the bezel, I thought looked really nice. And then for some reason, I really like this. Um, uh, you know, when you look at it like this, you don't think, ah, that's the, the, the basic silver B5000D. Um, it, it doesn't, that's not what I think when I look at it. I think, oh, this looks like a new, a new release or something a bit different. Anyway, I've kept them both on the rubber strap and uh, I really do like it. It's literally like owning a new a new watch, and all I've done is uh, swap the bezels over. Uh, isn't that interesting? And it's got me uh, thinking. It really has. And I think I uh, demonstrated demonstrated. I think I mentioned on camera that if um, and I, I imagine G-Shock will do this if they. Uh, 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 create a new full metal range and instead of having the screws uh, and uh, collars um, if they uh, develop a, a quick change uh, system I imagine that would be so cool but saying that I still like the screws and the collars the configuration I've got here uh, because there's something very mechanical and, uh, and solid about it that, that I do like uh, so, you know, I, I do like that. Um, yeah. Yeah, I'm so pleased. Uh, and I'm pleased that that mod happened by accident on camera, the way that it did. Anyway, uh, I wanted to show you them on, on, uh, on wrist. Uh, very good. Anyway, yes, once again, G-Shock, this is very cool. 
uh, I am enjoying these uh, by accident modifications and once again I hope everybody is well and speak again very soon.